Mexico was already a well-integrated country into the global economy before 1910, before the start of the revolution. So uh, Mexico joined the community of uh, trading partners in the U.S. in the uh, in Europe. Uh, it also uh, adopted the gold standard in 1905. Uh, it exported lots of materials, lots of raw materials, gold, silver, but also industrial metal, industrial minerals, henneken, uh, vanilla, and other agricultural products. So in general, Mexico was part of the global economy before 1910. Uh, and was, it was precisely 1910 when celebrating the uh, centennial of the independence that Mexico wanted to show up its material progress, wanted to exhibit how uh, modernized, how it was a modern economy, and uh, in a way it's a, it was appealing foreign investors to channel resources, to mines, to agricultural enterprises. In that sense, Mexico, in 1910, was a very uh, global economy, in a sense. Uh, the start of the revolution did not stop those flows. Quite the contrary, in, by 1910, 1911, Mexico under uh, experience an oil, a, a boom in oil production. Because of uh, earlier discoveries, Mexico was able, foreign oil companies were able to export Mexican oil to the United States. And throughout the decade, from 1910 to 1920, Mexico became a major player in oil markets. By 1918, it was the second largest oil producer in the world, just uh, because of all the investments that were taking place between 1910 and 1920. However, the country was engulfed in a revolution. The revolution had revolutionary armies Foreign diplomats uh, and foreign powers did not want to damage that oil industry. And they, in a sense, all protected the oil investments. There were major players like uh, Mr. Donaghy from the United States or Mr. Whitman Pearson from uh, Great Britain. So Mexico enjoyed this oil boom while revolutionary armies were fighting for the control of the executive power in the country. Oil was not booming just because there was rich, all these rich deposits in, in the, along the, the, the Gulf of Mexico, but also because of increases in demand. World War I increased the demand of oil, and therefore Mexico joined these efforts to provide oil to Europe. There were all other connections of the Mexican Revolution that started in November 1910, uh, and these other connections had to do on how the war was fought. Whereas in Europe, the entire societies contributed to the effort to the war effort by providing not only soldiers but also all kinds of resources and moving uh, women to the labor force. In Mexico, the idea of a total war, that is the involvement of the society into the war effort was also present at least for the years 1914-1916. There were innovations in how armies fought in battles, especially with uh, general, generals setting up new techniques, new ta tactics uh, in the war itself, but also 
with a Mexico experience a high demographic costs. Approximately 7 million, excuse me, approximately 1.4 million deaths occur in the decade from 1920, 1910 to 1920. Uh, thus, in a sense, the Mexican Revolution is connected to World War I in the way the war was fought. It was a total war. It was a huge effort in terms of resources and lives. So another connection of the Mexican Revolution with uh, World War I, and, and perhaps one of the best known episodes of this international interaction between the Mexican Revolution and the global context is the, what is called the Zimmerman Note. Foreign um, German diplomats in Mexico were trying to find ways in which the Mexican involvement in the war would help them. Maybe not directly, but on uh, in indirect ways. And one of these paths would be to, uh, uh, be to uh, the organization of a war between Mexico and the United States so that the American army would be involved in Mexican territory that rather than being involved in European soil. For that end, in early 1917, the foreign office in Berlin decided to send a note to then uh, Venustiano Carranza, the leader of, of the winning factor of the revolution. So by 1917, Carranza would be able to wage war on the United States. So they sent a coded message through uh, London, uh, and then Washington, and then in Mexico City. The coded message was intercepted in Mexico City by British spies. What Germans didn't know uh, was that uh, the British already had the codes from the beginning of the war, and they were able to decipher the Zimmerman note. What does what was the content of such a note? Uh, German, the Ger uh, Germany proposed Venustiano Carranza to which war on the United States, and in return, Mexico would ac acquire, if if they are victorious in such a war, Mexico would acquire uh, the territories of Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. They would also extend such an alliance to Japan. If, ja if Japan joins this alliance between Germany Mexi and Mexico, Japan would uh, have California as a booty in that, in that uh, war. Once known, the, uh, the Zimmerman note was repudi repudiated by the United States and the British government. The United States not entered the World War I not only because of the Zimmerman note, but it was an important factor, but also because Germany had decided to initiate a uh, unlimited U-boat warfare. So there is this connection between the Mexican Revolution and World War I. So that is another connection. We have the connections that Mexico was already a, uh, a economy well integrated in the world economy, that oil, the Mexican oil and was part of the uh, supply of, uh, of energy demanded by uh, the contending uh, parties in Europe, and the Zimmerman note was certainly the one of the more uh, important elements in these uh, global connections that Mexico had. And finally, there was another connection related to uh, artists. Many Mexican artists were not living in Mexico during the revolution, uh, revolutionary years. In part, some of them were exiles, but some others were living in Europe, 
and were absorbing in Europe all the new techniques, the vanguard uh, settings of Paris, of London, of uh, Italy or Spain. One of these artists were, was Diego Rivera. With uh, Rivera, there were other artists living abroad. But also, at the end of the revolution, at the end of the armed phases of the revolution, and at the end of the World War I, by 1919, when finally the, war was, the World War I was over, and huge fi fightings in Mexico City was also over, many foreigners visited Mexico City. Mexico City became a city of utopia, a city of the revolution, a city of dreams, a city of those who were being prosecuted elsewhere. They found refugee in Mexico. All these foreigners interacted with some intellectuals in Mexico. They founded the Communist Party. They came from all over the world. They came from India, from Romania, from Germany, from Spain, uh, certainly for, from the United States. All these intellectuals living in Mexico interacted, shared some dreams, and transformed th themselves, leave, them, leave their dreams themselves, and then they left the city. Once the city no longer was the center of this utopia, no longer was the center of this place in which new uh, ideas and experimentation took place. So it's really important to understand the Mexican Revolution within an international context. It's not only about battles among Mexicans. It's not ab about Mexican heroes. It's about a revolution, a social revolution that predated the uh, Russian Revolution predated the Chinese Revolution of 1912, and that show that the 20th century was really beginning. <laughs>